Well, out of thin air, here comes Dr. Floyd, our good friend. We've had Dr. Floyd here at the Indy Television Network Studios for a number of times. You are, we put you in the category of a regular. Dr. Floyd, right. it's, all, it's always good to see Glad you. Glad to be Thanks here. Thanks for joining us here at the round table this morning. And thank you for joining us as well. All right, this is a test. I got two questions for Dr. Floyd right off the bat. And number one, will faculty and students encounter anything new as they start this new school year? And then the second part of that question is, what is the theme for the school year? All right, yes, well, obviously we've got a lot of construction projects going on throughout the school district. And I'd like to start off uh, just with a word of thanks to all of the uh, uh, community members and uh, voters and taxpayers that stepped forward in February of 16 to the uh, polls and uh, checked yes. Uh, we do think it's important to uh, pass a $93 million bond election for our kids both now and well into the future. So now we have many of those projects uh, ongoing and as a result of those uh, projects uh, getting started and construction being scattered out throughout the district, the theme for this year is going to be building better schools and brighter futures. So that's our 2017-2018 uh, uh, theme for this year and so uh, we'll be rolling that out tomorrow morning. We have opening convocation for all of our employees at the high school and I'll be rolling that out tomorrow morning and uh, you'll be uh, seeing that uh, pretty often especially at the beginning of the year but uh, a lot of construction projects so we want people to be mindful of that and uh, you always see those signs on the highway that says give us a break uh, well that's kind of <laughs> where we will be uh, you might have to reroute or uh, do things slightly different until some of those projects yeah. get done teacher give me a break yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> well you. go ahead Steve no I was just gonna say thank you for that update sure um, dr. Floyd would you like to give us an um, a bond issue update Sure. Because um, well, uh, we noticed that you have some buses, right? Yes, some we new do. Buses, yeah. So. If uh, just a quick summary of what the uh, all-encompassing uh, piece of the bond issue was, we had safety and security in, included in there. We had one-to-one uh, -one technology devices included in that. We had upgrades to our transportation department in there, uh, along with uh, construction projects, renovations, and then some new construction. So uh, now we have the one-to-one -one technology devices in the hands of kids um, and uh, we just finished the first year of that so that's been a uh, wonderful thing for kids a good learning tool for kids and both a uh, teaching tool for teachers as well so we have those in place now we are in our second year of the three-year phase of the transportation department improvements uh, uh, we included a number of new buses uh, there in that uh, program including a new charter bus that we just got that uh, has our new logo on that we'll get to that in just a minute and then uh, the um, construction projects are we have a number of those completed already uh, when elementary students go into their uh, gyms this year they'll see a number of renovations to those uh, older gyms both flooring and walls and uh, stages and things like that so we're excited about the uh, progress of the bond issue and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing that thing to fruition within budget very good joining us this morning at the round table is dr daryl floyd and dr floyd as you know the city of enid went through a, a, a transformation of a, of a branding effort several years ago several i would say four or five years ago to kind of consolidate try to get this branding this image if you will of what the city of enid logo should look like and and to make everything uniform and understand that uh, the enid public schools went through the same thing because you could find a variety of logos in different buildings and so you went through this branding effort and i believe we have some examples of of the new logo and also the website on the, on the, the screen here in just a little bit but what are the results of this new branding effort okay yes we did go through a very comprehensive uh, branding um, project partly because especially at the high school we had a number of different logos that had been used throughout the years you know you get a new coach in and they sure. pull out something that they thought was cool and they'll use that and uh, so we, we especially as it relates to the high school we had so many different logos and brands out there that we needed to find a way to pull that together and have a cohesive family of logos that we will use and so the end product is that we now have a cohesive set uh, we call it a family of brands that will be used and they slightly vary but they have a common theme uh, mainly as it relates to the high school but if uh, they can customize it to some to some extent depending on whether it's a band or fine arts or uh, athletics or a different sport in athletics 
but the common theme will stay there and uh, there's also kind of a generic Enid uh, logo there okay. that the people can use district-wide but the elementary still will maintain their particular uh, logo and brand that they that they have always had this mainly was a clarification and a revision for high school so we encourage people to go to that website and just see the results of the branding efforts. yeah and there are protocols and procedures for if people want permission to use the logo they'll go through uh, Amber Fitzgerald's office uh, and those protocols and procedures are listed there as well. well. That's very similar to the city of Enid. When people want to use our logo, we have a design or designated website for that and to uh, ask for permission to use certain things. So thank you for that update. Sure. Thank you for that update, Dr. Ford. <coughs> so many positive changes this school year. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the impact that moving up to 6A1 will have on the schools? Well, there's, uh, appreciate you asking me the question because a little bit of confusion on that. Some people think that that goes into effect this fall. It uh, actually would not take effect until next fall, so it would be for the 18-19 school year, and it affects only football. So uh, for I several years now, that. yeah, okay. a lot of people think, well, that means in I every thought it was sport. everything, okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, just football only and for some time now we've been teetering on the proverbial edge uh, right in the middle of going up to 6A1 we've kind of been at the top end of 6A2 and now with the um, OSSAA granting permission for two of the Oklahoma City schools to be able to opt out of uh, the realignment process for lack of a better term that bumped us up and it, it kind of moved other people up from lower level classifications and bump them up too so there's several uh, districts that are not real happy with that but uh, we knew it was coming just weren't sure when and so uh, come next fall our football program will be competing uh, with the big boys in 6A1. Just just to tag along with Sarah's question Dr. Floyd what, what's the criteria just to remind everybody it's about student population Enrollment, right yes. it's it's not the size of the, the Enid community or anything or the it, football program it, yeah yeah it yeah. is the size it's the enrollment of the high school uh, 9 through 12 so you can have an extremely large school population but not even have certain sports what it is that student population yeah. mm -hmm. well we have a, a question from a viewer who I'd like to share with you dr. Floyd and, and I want to make sure I get this right it says what do you wish parents knew in order to help their child or student have a successful year? I really like that question. All right, yeah. Since well, I thought you would since your wife uh, is the one that uh, <laughs> told you to ask just that a viewer, question. Just a viewer. <laughs> a viewer, a common <coughs> viewer. Uh, but uh, obviously we'll want to uh, get students off on the uh, best foot possible. And uh, we all know that we want the very best for our own kids. Sure. And so that uh, goes for the whole generic population of our um, 8,000 students as well. So we want parents to a, be aware of uh, safety conditions, especially as it relates to school zones and the construction zones and things like that, and, and slow down in those areas, don't use your cell phone, things like that. But as it relates to kids, obviously we want to uh, encourage them to get the proper amount of rest and nutrition and um, get into a routine of, uh, you know, when they need to get up and go to bed and get up and go to school and that type of thing. So, uh, and then the main thing is just uh, I would encourage uh, parents to um, encourage their students to do their very best every single day and uh, get them started on a positive note and communicate well with uh, teachers and um, all of the uh, folks that their kids come in contact with because oftentimes that's where the issues get resolved and you can't uh, solve a problem if you don't know about it. So we encourage uh, good positive communication that is two-way. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Floyd, for all those good tips for this next school year. I'm sure a lot of parents will, be, um, will benefit from those. Is there any other thoughts? Uh, we're, we're kind of getting to the end of our roundtable discussion, but is there anything that you want to convey to the viewers or, or to parents or to students uh, while you have the, the floor? We'll, we'll give you permission. Okay. As, right. as, as well, teachers here, we'll give you permission to... All right. Uh, is, well, I, I Anything you need to add. Appreciate the opportunity, and, and I want to say, uh, I already mentioned a word of thanks to the community members and uh, voters for the uh, bond issue on February 16, uh, but also want to pause to say thank you to all of our teachers and our faculty and staff and employees because uh, many, many uh, employees, especially teachers, 
on their own went to professional development opportunities uh, throughout the summer and um, they didn't uh, necessarily have to do that and they, they did that because they want to uh, learn and get better as a teacher so they can do better for kids and uh, we had a number of employees that uh, went above and beyond this summer and getting the campuses ready for our kids as well and want to say thank you to them and then we have a lot of behind the scenes stuff uh, sure. that goes on that nobody ever sees and uh, those those folks don't often get the uh, recognition that they deserve uh, especially support folks so I want to say thank you to them as well very good one final question do you know when school starts <laughs> uh, let me think here August 16th I believe well, that's <laughs> next Wednesday right yes sir ready or not it will be here dr. Floyd thank you very much for joining us at the round table and the, again the theme was building something I'm sorry I didn't write it down on my uh, note. yeah help, you might want to get that tattooed on your forehead uh, <laughs> building better schools and brighter futures okay that's the goal today and that's the the theme for the school year dr. Floyd thanks for being here